Okay. Shall we start off? Yes, sir. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the second lecture of the SIPP, which is Scientists from India's Past and Present series that we've started as a part of the India's popularization, science popularization series. Uh, the first one happened last uh, month and uh, we are planning to continue doing this every single month. And basically we're trying to highlight the work done by some of the eminent scientists from India's past. December is uh, the birthday of uh, Srinivasa Ramanujan. I think it is a name that pretty much everybody around the world has heard, not just in India itself. And so we are very fortunate to have Professor, uh, Professor Shanta Laishram from the Indian S Statistical Institute to give a talk about his life and achievements. Uh, Ramanujan unfortunately passed away at a very young age of uh, 32, but within that short life of his, he was able to achieve so many things, which showed basically what a genius of man he was. And today's lecture by Shanta will, will basically cover some of the achievements that he managed to do. And the fact that he managed to inspire so many uh, uh, so many new scientists to work on 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 mathematics, uh, which was a field which was dwindling over time because you know, more lab work and field experiments were taking interest. So, uh, with that, I'm going to pass you on to Shanta, but I'll give you a very quick introduction of uh, what Shanta has been doing. So, Professor Shanta Leshram, he is, as I mentioned, he's based at the Indian Statistical Institute, which is in Delhi. And he, his research interests are mainly on number theory and uh, related area in mathematics, which is pretty much uh, the kind of field that uh, Ramanujan also was working on. So he's rightly placed to talk about, uh, about his achievements. He's obviously uh, got a lot of uh, publications in various journals, etc. You can look up his profile on their website uh, later if you're interested. And of course, he's been invited to give several lectures uh, on his work across the world. Uh, he is uh, basically, uh, he did his schooling from Manipur uh, and from after Manipur, he uh, moved on to Imphal uh, before joining TIFR, which is the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in Mumbai for his PhD in mathematics. After his mathematics uh, degree, uh, the PhD degree, he did postdoc postdoctoral research at uh, the University of Waterloo, which is in Canada, and then moved on to MPIM, Bonn, and ETH uh, Zurich before joining Iser Bhopal as a faculty for a short period of time. After that, he finally moved to ISI in Delhi, and he's been there over the last 10 years. He has been awarded several awards, including the Microsoft Young Faculty Award in 2010-11, and several fellowships uh, which, which followed from there, there on. He has been involved in mentoring several students, uh, which is really good because that is what we encourage from INIAS itself. Uh, it's not just uh, developing our own research, but also developing the next generation itself, uh, next generation also. He is an associate member of the Mathematical Olympiad Activities, uh, National Board of Higher Mathematics, Government of India. And he loves nature and reading and traveling. So, uh, you know, I think he's got a very, he's placed very well to talk about not just the achievements of Ramanujan, but also what happened to him on his uh, trip to the UK and how we went along in a different culture and what happened in the environment. So with that, I will pass you on to Professor Lashram. Uh, uh, Shanta, please take over and uh, share your screen if you can, please. Yeah, thank you very much, Anup, for your kind words. And uh, I'd like to thank in India's India for this invitation. And I, yeah, of course, Ramanujan's area work is quite a vast area. So I hope I'll be able to give a glimpse or a flavor of some of his work. So let me start by sharing the screen first. Okay, so yeah, so this screen is visible to all of you. Yes, we can see it clearly. Please go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, so <clears throat> today, yeah, I'll be talking about, of course, uh, the work of Ramanujan which all of you know, and today being uh, 22nd December, his birthday is celebrated as National Mathematics Day. And lots of activities are organized at different places all over the country today. And so I'll, I'm going to start with some of the early history about his uh, war Ramanujan and before I come to his work. So without, without much ado, let me start with the talk. 
Of course, as you can see, he's Srinivasa Ramanujan, born in 1887 and died at a young age of 32 years. So uh, he was born on 22nd December, 1887 at Iroh, uh, Iroh, that was called Madras Presidency at that time and presently is now in Tamil Nadu state. He was a Brahmin, I mean, um, and uh, when he was born, he, he was called the Srinivasa Ramanujan Iyengar. And uh, his father was uh, this case okay, Srinivasa Iyengar and ma mother was Komala Tamil. In fact, uh, after his birth, the, he grew up mostly in Kumbakonam in the present Tamil Nadu state. At that time it was Madras presidency. By the way, his home at Kumbakonam now is kind of a uh, sort of a historical place for people to go and watch and his uh, notebooks and other things are kept. I mean, his, some of his belongings are kept there. And there's a Sastra Ramanujan, Univers Sastra University, which takes care of this place. So let me now talk to you about his early education. So during 1893 and 1897, he had his primary school education from Kangian Primary School, uh, which is in a, uh, which is in Kumbakonam. In fact, uh, he passed his primary examinations in English, Tamil, Geography, and Arithmetic. So during high school days, and he was an outstanding student. Uh, like he, yeah, he used to score a lot of marks, and he used to win academic awards and. Uh, after his high school in uh, high school during 1898 to 1904 at town high school of Kumbakonam, he won an scholarship to go to college. So, by the way, so he was, I mean, he has been sort of active in mathematics from the beginning. At the age of 11 years, <clears throat> so he, he could learn the college mathematics uh, the uh, from these two college students who were lodgers at his home. So, like when he was just eleven, the 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 mathematics at the college level, he he could learn it completely. And at, at the age of thirteen years, he mastered the uh, this uh, book of Loni on this advanced trigonometry. In fact, he discovered most of the theorems on his own. Later on, when he saw that. Uh, these are already proven. He was a bit disappointed, but he used to figure out all, I mean, most of the theorems on his own. And at the age of 15 years, he, he was able to show how, how to solve these cubic equations. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, and, uh, and, and so also give a method for solving them. Now, after his uh, high school from Kumbakonam, uh, so, uh, I mean, during the high school days, he used to learn a lot of books. One of the books which has a big impact on his life was this book of uh, Carr on a synopsis of elementary results in pure mathematics. The author was uh, G. Scoobrice Carr. So, in fact, this is a collection of more than 5,000 theorems. So, uh, the, way, the, the way the book is written is that they listed all the theorems but without much proof. In fact, it was more than 6,000. So he used to read this book and try to learn his theorems himself. So this big, uh, this book was the real motivation for, for him. And in fact, he, uh, it instigated him to have mathematical investigation. So it awakened his mathematical investigation. And uh, of course, he didn't have a formal training in mathematics. Of course, uh, he just has his high school extra. So, he didn't have a formal training. So the way the book of Carr is written, so it inspired his work. So basically he used to think that he used to just write the theorem. So he didn't really uh, care about giving proofs, though he probably knew the proof, but he used to just write down the results and theorems, like the way this book was written. So uh, when he was around 17 years, he also worked on this Bernoulli numbers. So uh, these are the, uh, Bernoulli numbers are the uh, <coughs> integers. Okay, so there's a, uh, there's a typo here. So uh, the, the, these are rational numbers, which are defined by the exponential generating function x by e power x minus one. You, if you expand this, 
So you have this bn x power n by n factorial. So you write the series expansion for this function x over e power x minus one from n, n from zero to infinity. So the coefficients of x power n by, uh, uh, so this is given by this bn by n factorial. So that number bn is called the Bernoulli number. And uh, he, uh, he also calculated this Euler's constant, which is defined by the limit of the reciprocals of numbers from one to n minus log n. So if you look at this sum j from one to n, one over j minus log n. So, <clears throat> and if you take the limit when n goes to infinity, uh, this gives the Euler constant. By the way, so even now this understanding properties of Bernoulli numbers, uh, I mean, it's, it's a lot of, a lot of work has been done on this. It's still a lot of work is to be done about understanding Bernoulli numbers and Euler's constant. In fact, it's an open problem to show whether Euler's constant, which I've defined here, is it a rational or not irrational number? We don't know whether Euler's constant is rational, irrational. Uh, I mean, either is it rational or irrational? This is an open problem. So he actually uh, tried to, of course, uh, he was not trying to show that it's rational or irrational, but he was trying to find this Euler constant. Uh, he was trying to calculate this Euler, Euler constant to a number of decimal digits. And after his high school, so with the scholarship, he joined this government arts, arts college in Kumbakonam in 1904. So by that time, he was so engrossed in mathematics that he spent all his time in mathematics. He didn't care about any other subjects. Because of that, he performed very badly in other subjects. I mean, all, of course, in mathematics, he could pass and he, I mean, he could score well, but not, not so in other subjects. And that was the reason, uh, like he lost his scholarship and he has to flunk the college. So he left the college midway. Again, in 1906, he was enrolled in Panchayapa's college in Madras. There also similar thing happened. Like uh, he was excellent, of course, he was very excellent in mathematics, but then his excellent was that, so he used to, the, the mathematics which was taught in the college, he, uh, that was used to be very simple for him and he was not so interested in that. He was more interested in higher or advanced mathematics. Anyway, uh, in any case, so he was, he failed in other subjects. And uh, in fact, he failed his fine arts degree exam in December 1906 and 1907. And that's why he has to leave his scholars without any degree. He, uh, he, uh, he continued to pursue independent research in mathematics. So he never completed his scholars. Then in 1909, he married Janaki Amal. So by that, at the time, Janaki Amal was, uh, so by, Janaki Amal was born in 1899 and died in 1994. At that time, Janaki Amal was just nine years old. And uh, <clears throat> after, after sometimes during the marriage, after the marriage, I mean, within a year, he had some health issues. And in fact, he had problem trying to find doctor to do surgery for him. Finally, a doctor did surgery for free to him. And uh, like he didn't have any college degree, then he had health issues, then uh, he had no means um, for support at that time. So he used to like go around this Chennai city, trying to find work. And also like in between he tutored some students uh, to earn mon some money to earn his livelihood. I mean, he was trying to sort of uh, do his mathematics and at the same time trying to earn some money to uh, sustain his livelihood. So uh, he was in a really bad set that time. I mean, yeah, because financially very weak and then no, I mean like no college degree, no job, nothing. So he had really difficulty problem, but, uh, but then he was craving for some person or some attention for his mathematics. So that, be, uh, that became sort of a reality when he met Mr. B. Ramaswamy Iyer, one of the founders of this Indian Math Mathematical Society. So that actually changed his life for good. In fact, uh, <clears throat> through Mr. Ramaswamy Iyer, he was introduced to R. Ramachandra Rao, 
a district, uh, uh, the district collector of Nellore at that time, Nellore is in Tamil Nadu, and uh, who was also a secretary of Indian Mathematical Society. So through Ramaswamy Iyer, he got introduced to Ramachandra Rao, and uh, he he tried to introduce, in fact, uh, his work to Ramachandra Rao. So uh, so he explained his uh, work on elliptic integral hypergeometric series, theory of divergence series, extra. In fact, he sort of was, he, he tried to sort of uh, convince Ramachandra Rao about this work. Initially, Ramachandra Rao sort of thought that he was sort of, I mean, he didn't believe in, uh, him, uh, in, in him much, but then after seeing all this work and so on, and after discussing with few others, finally, Mr. Uh, Ramachandra Rao believed in his mathematical brilliance and he agreed to help him. So in 1910, he moved to Madras, uh, that time uh, with the support of Ramachandra Rao and he started with, uh, uh, he, used to, uh, he continued his mathematical obsession. So on his recommendation and thus he actually got a small job in Madras fortress. So uh, I'll come to that. In fact, after meeting this Ramaswamy uh, Iyer, so with his help, he also published his first work in this journal of Indian Mathematical Society. So in the first, uh, one of his first work was the problem he posed in journal of Indian Mathematical Society. So he was asking, find this number. So you look at the number root of one plus two times root of one plus three times root over. So it's a nested, uh, infinitely nested radicals uh, problem. So in fact, over three, I mean, over six months in three issues, no solutions were offered by anyone. And he actually, in his not true, uh, I mean, he, in his notebook, he formulated an equation to solve such infinitely nested, uh, nested radicals problem by looking at, uh, by writing uh, such equations as x plus n plus a, as I mean, x plus n. Oh yeah, so he sort of tried, I mean, gave a nested radical equation and he gave this problem. And using that, he he saw that this, the number, the number which I'm showing here, the nested radicals, this number is actually three. So this was one of his first work published in, I mean, not uh, uh, the first problem he put, uh, post in Journal of Indian Math Society. And in fact, uh, his first formal paper was published uh, in Journal of Math Society on the properties of Bernoulli numbers. So uh, I'm just rewriting the Bernoulli numbers once again. So Bernoulli numbers, uh, so these are sequence of rational numbers given by this exponential generative function. So what he saw in the first paper on these properties of Bernoulli numbers is that the denominators of Bernoulli fractions are divisible by six. And in fact, he found a way to sort of calculate BN recursively in the sense that if you know the previous Bernoulli numbers, you know how to find the next Bernoulli number. So this was his first formal publication. So uh, with the help of uh, Mr. Rao and others, so, uh, he could get a job as a, uh, as a clerk in the accountant general's office of the Madras, Madras Port Trust in 1912. So once he has some job, so he was sort of relieved and he started his, uh, uh, he continued his mathematical obsessions. Luckily, his boss over there, Sir Francis Spring and his colleague S. Narayana Iyer, who is also a treasurer of Indian Math Society at that time, so both of them increased Ramanujan to pursue his mathematical obsessions. In fact, that time he was, uh, he kept on sort of uh, working on continued fractions, divergent series, elliptic integrals, hypergeometric series, distribution of prime. So they somehow sort of increased uh, this Francis Spring and Narayana Iyer increased him to uh, work on his obsessions as a clerk that time. But Ramanujan was desperate for more attention. In fact, he wanted to 
so many times what it happens so whenever he used to uh, introduce his work that people that time didn't couldn't appreciate it because it was quite difficult for the people around him to understand his work so he was desperate to get again uh, recognition for his work from leading mathematicians that time so he used to he started contacting uh, different mathematicians that time and in fact of course uh, england was uh, quite well i mean cambridge and this was quite well known for mathematics that time so and of course india and uh, india was under UK, british rule and of course uh, lots of connections were there so he was trying to get recognition again recognition from uh, english mathematicians that time so he used to write to a number of people so some of them thought he was a cranky, it didn't recall, but one of them actually, uh, because he said, I couldn't follow the work, but uh, he sort of suggested them of, uh, suggested that you write to Hardy. So in fact, uh, like this, Mr. Rao, his boss extra, so from their support and encouragement, he used to write to professor in England about his mathematical findings. So he used to send a copy of his, uh, notebook the findings what he did in fact the the main sort of thing came up when he wrote to this godfrey harold haldi uh, hardy gs hardy who was a well-known professor of cambridge university at that time so he wrote to hardy on 16 january 1913 with a long list of discoveries and it's actually it was the turning point in his life not only that it was a turning point in, in, his, in Ramanujan's life, but it changed the lives of both Hardy and Ramanujan. So who was J.S. Hardy? So J.S. Hardy was, of course, only 36 years of, 36 years as that time, but he was already a leading mathematician in England. He was a famous analytic number theorist. He was a famous analytic number theorist. And Hardy, along with his, uh, collaborator and in fact, uh, uh, this person called J, uh, Professor J.E. Littlewood, who is another famous and well-established well mathematician from Trinity College. So but, uh, they had a partnership and in fact, they were dominating the mathematical scene of England in the first half of 20th century. Basically, so they were kind of leading lights of mathematics in England that time. So the joint partnership of Hardy and Little was, was quite legendary. In fact, they wrote 100 joint papers together and they collaborated many things. So there's this Hardy Little method and many other things they worked together and they made fundamental contributions. In fact, a Hardy and Little were, they were instrumental in turning England into a superpower of mathematics, in particular in number theory analysis. Actually, that time, uh, their work on number theory analysis was so profound and everyone used to look up to them for their work. So uh, they turned actually England, particularly Cambridge and Trinity College Extra as a powerhouse of mathematics. So <clears throat> when Hardy was, uh, Hardy received this letter from Ramanujan, he was both perplexed at the same time, he was both impressed, but then he was also perplexed by the work of Ramanujan. So he was, he sort of, he looked at this paper, he, he tried to uh, uh, look at this, uh, try to prove it, this prove it extra. In fact, he was sharing the letter with Littlewood. So some of the, like Ramanujan in his notebook, uh, in the letter he said, he used to state the theorems and results without any proofs. And like he uh, gave them as assertions. The Hardy, some of, of course, Hardy knew some of them well, and some others uh, he could prove, and some others he couldn't disprove, I mean, uh, uh, they could not prove it, uh, they could disprove it, and some are wrong, some are correct, but what, what they intrigued was that they found many of them was quite different, quite fascinating and unusual, and not only that, some of them were quite impossible to resolve, so they were not able to prove some of them. But, so initially when they thought, they thought that this guy could be sort of a junk, uh, or I mean, something. But then after looking uh, this together, uh, looking at, uh, at his letter together with Littlewood, they, was fin they were finally convinced that this person must be genius and totally exceptional. But then what Hardy also knew from these letters that 
Ramanujan really lacked basic training for a professional mathematician because Mr. Ramanujan used to write and record the uh, results in a paper, right, in a notebook. So he didn't write proper proof. So he didn't have a rigorous proof method. So of course he probably knew, but then he, since he was not trained like a professional mathematician, he lacked this basic training. So Hardy could recognize it from their correspondence. And in fact, he felt that, like, of course, he started believing in this uh, exception. I mean, he, is, uh, he believed that Ramanujan was, of course, genius and totally exceptional. And he felt that if Ramanujan was to fulfill his, uh, his potential, then he had to have a solid foundation in mathematics, like a, a Cambridge graduate, or so he has to have a good training in mathematics, like a proper mathematician. So, all of you have, of course, seen Hardy's picture before. He's, uh, he's Godfred Harold Hardy, so J.S. Hardy. In fact, so here I want to tell you one thing. Hardy was, I mean, sort of, uh, he was an atheist, so he, he didn't believe in God. But then, interestingly, but then he used to play hide and seek with God in the sense that he used to challenge God in different way. Like, he was kind of, I mean, he has a different, he said, I don't believe in God, but uh, I mean, so he, he used to think that uh, God is playing, uh, I mean, but then he, he's playing with God in this. So there are lots of anecdotes about Hardy. So those who are, inter I mean, the audience here, they can try to read this uh, in auto autobiography of Hardy, but um, it's a, around 40 pages, so it's quite nice. So there are lots of interesting uh, anecdotes and about this life uh, is there. So it's a good reading. So after uh, after seeing this work of Ramanujan, Hardy made this quote. So this formula defeated me completely. I had never seen anything in the list like them before. A single look at them is enough to show that they could only be written down by a mathematician of the highest class. They must be true because if they are not true, no one would have had the Im imagination to invent them. So he was very much convinced that uh, this, the work of Ramanujan, the, the results with Ramanujan, it was quite fascinating and interesting. And Ramanujan was, I mean, a genius. So he was convinced that. And of course, so this is Littlewood. So he and Hardy was dominating the materials in, uh, in England that time. So one thing about Hardy is that of course, he was a very outstanding mathematician. Well, I mean, uh, top mathematician of, of that time. But not only that, he was also a wonderful teacher. And he was happy to nurture talent that time, eager to nurture. So you see, that's how, I mean, he got like, uh, when Ramanujan wrote to him, he got a response. Of course, he could understand that something is good, bad, etc. But then he was ready to, I mean, eager to nurture talent. Ramanujan wrote to many other professors, but some of them didn't respond, one of them responded that they doesn't know his work extra, but Hardy was the one who took keen interest in the work. So Hardy sent an encouraging reply to Ramanujan. And after that, they had a frequent exchange of letters. So he used to write something, Ramanujan used to reply and they had few uh, frequent exchange of letters for some time. Finally, uh, Hardy invited Ramanujan to come to England to study at Cambridge University. So that time, of course, there are some cultural issues of Ramanujan. Ramanujan was a Brahmin, and his mother had some inhibition to send his son to England because of different cultural shock and other things. And uh, initially, uh, his mother objected, but later on, she finally relented and uh, agreed to go, uh, agreed for Ramanujan to go to England. So there are a lot of, I mean, stories about that. He saw in the dream that the goddess used to come and say that you should not uh, you should let your son go freely etc but i mean basically at the end he she agreed so once uh, ramanujan agreed to come to england hardy then asked <coughs> this neville uh, eh neville who was at i mean uh, at uh, london that time but who was going uh, who used to have communication with madras you still who used to travel to madras then uh, he asked Neville to ask uh, 
unable to secure a scholarship for Ramanujan from Madras University so that he could go to England. And uh, with the help of Neville, actually, finally, uh, <clears throat> so on 17 March 1914, Madras seemed to offer a fellowship to Ramanujan. And with that, Ramanujan was able to go to England. So he started for uh, England on 17 March 1914. Finally, after around a month, of course, he was traveling in the ship that time, Ramanujan arrives in London. So that was sort of, uh, I mean, after that, the life completely changed for Ramanujan. So here I want to sort of uh, give you some glimpse of the work or kind of mathemat kind of work with uh, or like uh, kind of results written by Ramanujan to Hardy. So, and if, if someone sees it, they may think that okay, he's crazy, but of course Hardy could recognize the potential. So one such thing which was written in the letter of Ramanujan was this infinite sum. So one plus two plus three plus four up to infinity is equal to minus 12. Of course, if you just see the sum of, I mean, you feel that, okay, this is total rubbish, right? I mean, you have this sum of, uh, yeah, so sum of positive integers, it's negative rational number. I mean, how could it be possible? In fact, uh, Hardy, he was a, of course, he was a topmost analytic number theorist that time. So he knew about that. Okay, so th this guy here really had an intuition because this is connected to the work of Riemann Jita function. And he was actually really impressed by this result on this infinite sum. Because, uh, of course, uh, just that sum doesn't work, but then it follows from this Riemann Jita function, uh, it's analytic continuation of Riemann Jita function. Actually, from that, it follows that, uh, I mean, this is not the, uh, not the real sum, but the value of the Riemann Jita function at one is minus one over 12. And this was, I mean, sort of, it made a huge impression on Hardy after seeing this, because Hardy, of course, knew that Ramanujan didn't have a formal training and there was no way he could have access to Riemann's work, sort of, to write this. So he was really convinced that he must be super genius. And another one which Hardy received from Ramanujan was, uh, of course, quite new to Hardy. It was on about this hypergeometric series, which was first studied by Euler and Gauss. So we have this summation of so-called hypergeometric series. So I won't really go into what is the hypergeometric series, but it requires, I mean, uh, like sort of, you have this infinite summations involving powers, etc. cetera. And uh, sorry, Ramanujan could give, I mean, like he used, he used to give this number of hypergeometric series to Hardy. In fact, right now, a lot of, uh, lot of work in hypergeometric series, hypergeometric series extra, uh, extra in, uh, for, are sort of inspired by Ramanujan. And people have been trying to find like the identities of Ramanujan, a lot of new identities have come up and still people are researching for new identities. Another a reason which Hardy saw and which, for which he was quite impressed is the following. You look at this sort of uh, something called continued fraction, one one over one plus e power minus two pi e so uh, based on natural logarithm e so e power minus two pi over e power minus four pi one plus this so this is so called continued fraction, and he he could sum this uh, he could write, um, write this continued fraction easily in this form, root over five plus root five by two minus root five plus one by two times e power two pi by five. Of course, another was about another was about another continued fraction. For example, this is the periodic continued fraction one, one, one. So uh, you are asking, so find x given by this numbers, one over one plus one divided one plus and so on. So Ramanujan was, I mean, like he was quite an expert in continued fraction. So he could sort of give, uh, like he, to, he had a lot of results on the continued fractions. So after seeing all this, uh, of course, Hardy was really impressed and that's how uh, actually uh, he invited Ramanujan to Cambridge. So once Ramanujan arrives at Cambridge, 
So uh, he collaborated with Hardy and Littlewood for around five years, where lots of new and interesting mathematics came up, and they actually came out in lot of publications that time. By the way, Hardy and Ramanujan were of totally, totally opposite personality. I mean, very highly contrast personalities. Because Ramanujan was a Brahmin, pure vegetarian, of course, no alcohol, nothing, and he lived a pure, different life. Where Hardy was kind of a, with all the time with Thai, God, and of course, uh, it was a completely different culture. Of, uh, so Ramanujan really had some culture so initially, but of course, they were. Uh, divided by culture and personalities, but united by mathematics. So their collaboration was a class of different cultures, beliefs, and working styles. They have different working styles, but of course brought together by mathematics. So in 1916, Ramanujan was awarded BA degree by research for his work on highly composite numbers. So uh, of course, I'm not going to say what is highly composite numbers. You can think that highly composite numbers are sort of numbers which set a lot of prime divisors in a way. So that's a, a easy way. But uh, and we need more info. Uh, like if I had to really tell about composite, highly composite numbers, I need to spend another lecture for that. Anyway, so this for his work on highly composite numbers, which was published in the Proceedings of London Math Society. He was awarded BA degree by research at Cambridge in 1916. And after a lot of, of course, interesting things come up, came up in his life. So in 1917, he was elected to the London Mathematical Society. And 1918, he became a fellow of the Royal Society. Of course, he was one of the youngest fellows in the history of uh, Royal Society. And also he was the second Indian fellow of Royal Society. In fact, the fellowship of the Royal Society is considered quite prestigious till that. And of course, uh, if you are a fellow of Royal Society, you're considered quite, I mean, great. So uh, you're for, so he, he actually was one of the youngest fellows for Royal Society. And he, in fact, he was uh, given fellow of Royal Society for his work on elliptic functions and theory of numbers. And again, in 1918, he was also elected fellow of Trinity College, Cambridge. So he was the first fellow of, uh, first Indian to become a fellow of Trinity College. By the way, I mentioned here that uh, Ramanujan was the second Indian fellow of the Royal Society. So the first Indian fellow of Royal Society was Ardasir Karsetji, who was a marine engineer based in Bombay and he was uh, he became a fellow in 1841. So, and, um, and of course, the Ramanujan became, became in 1918. Right now, of course, we have many other fellows of Royal Society. So uh, in the five years, around five years uh, time when he was at Cambridge, he really, I mean, a lot of interesting and new work. And uh, he actually became uh, like, of course, he got his fellowships, etc. But then, Around 1919, like because of this, uh, his health deteriorated. I mean, like he was, of course, uh, England was is quite cold compared to Madras, of course. And at the same time, like he was a total vegetarian and like uh, he had some other, many other issues. So he, his health actually worsened. That's why he returned to India in 1919. And unfortunately in 1920, he died at a very young age of 32 years. Which was which is a very uh, which is a great loss for mathematics community not only in India but all over the world. If if he stayed alive for a longer time, he would have made much important contributions later on. I mean, uh, of course, it doesn't mean that what he did was less, but I mean, of course, he would have made much more. Still, his contribution was quite immense and huge and has a lot of impact. Now I'll talk a little bit about Ramanujan's mathematical heritage. Of course, Ramanujan had a wide interest over different areas of mathematics. Like he had interest in infinite series, integrals, asymptotic expansions and approximations, the gamma function, hypergeometric and Q hypergeometric functions. In fact, uh, one of the slides where I saw, I mean, like where he has seen finite sum that was on the hypergeometric series. 
and he did a lot of work on continued fractions, theta functions, class invariance, and also on Diophantine equations, congruences, magic squares, and so on. He had a wide variety of, of interest. In fact, uh, so he himself wrote three notebooks. They are now all published. I will mention more about his notebooks. And he had 37 published papers in different journals. So Journal of Indian Math Society, his first paper was in Journal of Indian Math Society. Then later on, he published in Proceedings of London Math Society, Proceedings of Cambridge Philosophical Society, then Proceedings of Royal Society, Messenger, Mathematics, Mathematics, and Quarterly Journal of Math. So these are some journals. These are journals where he publishes 37 papers. Of course, there's this lost notebook, which is his work, but um, not uh, published later on. So I'll mention more about this. Okay, so first I want to tell you about this collected works of Ramanu. So all his 37 papers, they're actually written, I mean, they're in this book called Collected Papers of Srinivasa Ramanujan, published by American Math Society. Of course, the authors are J.S. Uh, Ramanujan Hardy, B.B. Sesu Iyer, B.M. Wilson, Bruce, and of course, finally Bruce Byrne, actually he compiled all of them and just published in 2000. And uh, it actually, yeah, so what uh, it started in 1927. So after the death of Ramanujan, uh, Hardy wanted to publish a collect, I mean, all the papers of Ramanujan, which, which they started originally. But then uh, later on, it, I mean, they collected all the other papers together and published in 2000. So this is about his collected works. So here is three notebooks. So basically it's believed that he worked uh, on these notebooks most likely during college time, but maybe even earlier. So, I mean, of course it was discovered during his college time. So probably he started working much earlier and uh, he used to work on his notebooks till his departure to England. So the first notebook is of 351 pages and uh, it was organized in 16 chapters. The second notebook was a revised enlargement of the first notebook. It has 256 pages and organized in 21 chapters. And the third notebook had only 33 pages. So this is one of the, one of the pages from his notebook. So here you can see he sort of try to expand this uh, polynomials, right? I mean, so the ratio, the fraction of two polynomials, and so on. So this is another page from one of his notebooks. So after Ramanujan that actually Hardy wanted to publish his notebooks in an edited form, and like he gave it to uh, like Neville, George Neville Watson and B. M. Wilson to edit these notebooks. So they mainly focus on the second notebook. So Wilson used to work on the chapters two to 14 and Watson look at the chapters 15 to 21. So Watson actually died in 1935 and he wrote over 30 papers inspired by the work of Raman, not, uh, Ramanujan in his notebook. But then after 1930s, sort of their interest sort of, uh, I mean, their interest sort of uh, decreased. So in 1957, the Thai Institute of Namde Research in Mumbai, they published these notebooks without editing. So you actually can find this online. And another person who really took a keen interest in Ramanujan work is, is Bruce Byrne. So he actually uh, sort of, uh, he wanted to group all the entries in the Ramanujan's notebooks. So uh, basically in 1974, he started this project uh, and finally in 1997, uh, so he, uh, I mean, he sort of completed the publication of this fifth, I mean, uh, fifth volume of Ramanujan. So he, like Ramanus, he published four, five books, so Ramanujan Notebook, part one, two, three, four, up to five. And finally completed in 1997, where sort of they tried to prove almost all the entries in notebooks. And another mathematician, 
of course, uh, Har the Bruce Bernice is still alive, and of course, uh, Josh Andrews is still alive. So Josh Andrews sort of try, I mean, try to work on this. Uh, the North Swiss was kept in the Orient Library of the Trinity College to see if there's anything interesting. So basically, he look at Jane Watson's handwritten notes, which was uh, which he was working on Ramanujan's work. And he, there he found a pile of pile of papers with Ramanujan's handwriting. And after this, both Hardy and no no both George Andrews and both Bruce Byrne they started this project of systematically proving all the identities in the lost notebook, the notebooks which he found. So in 2014, more or less the project is completed and four volumes of this out of five of Ramanujan's notebook are already, uh, lost notebook are already published. So this is uh, from a page from one of the lost notebooks, so which <coughs> Josh Andrews found. By the way, so I think most of uh, in Madras, uh, I think in Ramanujan Institute for Advanced Study, I think uh, is a handwritten notes are still available. So this is about uh, lost notebooks and uh, his contributions. Now I want to talk in the last few minutes. I want to talk about some of his mathematical achievements. So Ramanujan's discoveries are unusually rich, and his formula can be investigated in depth much later on. In fact, many of his identities and formulas give new directions to the research. So one interesting, uh, like uh, one, uh, his work, uh, which was, they had a lot of work on this integer partition function together with Hardy, and their work gave rise to this uh, method called circle method, which is now a very important and fundamental tool for analytic number theory. In fact, his discovery of multi-task functions also gave a new direction in the study of modular forms. His ideas is still, I mean, has inspired many people and still continue to inspire uh, different generations of mathematicians and other scientists. So I want to talk, talk about some of this uh, mathematical legacy of Ramanujan. So the ramanujan Peterson conjectures about the Ramanujan tau function. And uh, this follows from the well conjecture in algebraic geometry. So it has connections with to algebraic geometry in the form of well conjectures. And Pierre, Pierre Delin, so he proved this well conjectures uh, for which he got this Fields medal, the highest medal in mathematics, highest prize in mathematics in 1978. So, so Ramanujan Peterson conjecture was actually proved by Delin uh, when he proved this well conjectures. So another sort of connection is on this monstrous moon sign or moon sign theory, where you have this unexpected connection between monster group and modular functions, in particular the J function, which was studied by Ramanujan. In fact, this work of Borchers on this uh, monstrous moon sign theory got him Phil's medal in 1998. Also, uh, sort of Ramanujan's work has some sort of influence um, some sort of connection to Fermat's last theorem proof. So Andrew Weiss uh, proof of Fermat's last theorem, it used Galois representations. So uh, in fact, Galois representation was developed as a tool to study this paper of Ramanujan from 1919. So there's a lot of, I mean, there's connection to Ramanujan to Fermat's last, sorry, Fermat's last theorem proof. In fact, Ramanujan work has connections and applications in other areas of sciences like string theory in physics, signal processing, etc. So even, I mean, of course, Ramanujan didn't see this, but later on we have sort of connections to different areas of um, sciences. So now I want to sort of show you some of the things Ramanujan is not for, known for. So this is Ramanujan Solner constant. So this is the unique uh, positive integer, uh, positive zero of the logarithmic integral function. So I won't define what are those. So this is the constant, which is like 1.451 and so on. So this is known as Ramanujan Solner constant. And there's this Ramanujan Peterson conjecture, which has the name Ramanujan. And also 
uh, this famous conjectures in automorphic forms known as Ramanujan conjecture and Ramanujan primes, which I'm going to define. Then tau Ramanujan, which also I'm going to define. Then Ramanujan theta function. Then then we have this Ramanujan summation. Roger Ramanujan identities. Then oh, sorry, Ramanujan masters theorem. And, and many more. So basically Ramanujan is men, uh, known for many things, but this is some of the things for which has the name Ramanujan uh, in it. So, so all of you are familiar with the taxi cab number 1729. So let me define what's this taxi cab number, which is also known as Annette Hardy Ramanujan number. So this is the smallest Annette, Hard, Annette taxi cab number or Annette Hardy Ramanujan number is the smallest integer, which you can express as sum of two positive cubes in n different way. So uh, second text cube number means you can write a cube in two different, uh, sum of two uh, positive cubes in two different ways. So if you can write in n distinct ways, then it's called n uh, uh, text cube number. Of course, the most famous text cube number uh, after which the Hardy Ram, it became Hardy Ram, I mean, which is called the Annette, I mean, the, uh, I mean, so second taxi cab number, which is also known as Annette, second Hardy Ramanujan number is this 1729. So which is one cube plus 12 cube, uh, which you can write it as one cube plus 12 cube is as, uh, and also as nine cube plus 10 cube. So there's an anecdote from Hardy about it. So I once remember, so when Hard, Ramanujan was ill and, and in the hospital, Hardy actually came to uh, meet him. So I remember was going to see him when he was lying ill at Put Putney. I had written in taxi cab number 1729 and remarked that the number seemed to be rather a dull one and hope it was not an unfavorable omen. Ramanujan replied that no, it's a very interesting number. It's the smallest number expressible as sum of two positive cubes in two different ways. After that, it became known as this taxi cap number. Right now, we, we know only the first six taxi cap numbers. So second, uh, taxi, this is second taxi cap number, third taxi cap four up to sixth. We don't know anything more than sixth. Uh, so how did Ramanujan work a lot on the partition formula? which is the number of ways to, uh, ways to write n as a sum of, I mean, positive integers, so an order sequence. For example, a four, you can partition into five ways. So one, a four, four is four, one plus one plus one, one plus one plus, one plus two, and so on. So there are five different ways. And it has a lot of interesting applications in different areas like probability, particle physics, et cetera. And it has become one of the richest uh, it's, it's well studied and it's become one of the research, research area of mathematics in recent times. And Hardy Ramanujan, they gave an asymptotic partition formula for the, uh, this. How, I mean, how does uh, a net part, a partition of N looks like? So they gave sort of an asymptotic formula. And there's this well known uh, Ramanujan tau function, which is the <clears throat> Q expansion, expansion of this Q times one minus Q power L, L bigger than one, two power 24, for Q less than one. So you expand it as Q minus 24 Q square, et cetera. So tau of one is one, tau of two is minus 24, tau of three is 252 and so on. So this is another well-known Ramanujan tau function, which is well studied and it has some properties. Since I don't have much time, I won't go into it. And uh, in fact, there's been connections of Ramanujan tau with the Fibonacci sequence. For example, tau of one factor is first tau of Fibonacci and ta tau of five factor is this, you can write this as product of this Fibonacci numbers. And uh, there's this Ramanujan primes, uh, which I, uh, I will try, uh, since I don't, uh, I'm running short of time, I won't go into it. So basically, uh, and Ramanujan prime is the, List integer such that there's a list n prime between uh, list integer x such that there's a list uh, uh, n prime between x and x by two, uh, x by two and x. And the first few Ramanujan primes are 
the first Amazon Prime is two, second one is 11, third one is 17 and so on. But I actually had a work, uh, I actually work on this Ramanujan Prime. I had, in fact, I myself some results on the Ramanujan Primes. And also there's this Ramanujan Nagel equation where suppose, so you take out seven from powers of two and ask when it becomes a square. So we know that uh, when n is say, three, four, five, seven, and 15, two n minus seven is a square. And ask for solutions of all these things. So this is known as Ramanujan Nagel equation, first conjecture by Ramanujan in 1913, but proved by Nagel in 1948. And in fact, in general, uh, the equations of the form x square plus d equal to a b power n where d a b are fixed and x and n are variable these are called ramanujan nagel type equations of course this is continued fraction so i mean sort of the way it's written this is for the continued fraction of like one one plus one over this so ramanujan work a lot on this continued fraction and this x is actually root five minus one by two so this one can see easily so here I want to conclude with the following uh, word. So in fact, Ramanujan left an indelible legacy in the world of mathematics and his works still inspires professional mathematicians and scientists alike. A lot of people uh, became interested in number theory after seeing Ramanujan's work. And his uh, theories and equations, they find, have connections with different areas of mathematics and other sciences, particularly physics. And in fact, Hardy, he compared Ramanujan only to Euler and Jacobi, who was one of the greatest, num I mean, some of the greatest number theorists at that time. So Hardy used to compare only uh, Ramanujan to Euler and Jacobi. So he's one of the greatest mathematicians ever lived. And we Indians are really proud for this genius son of India. So with that, let me stop here. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Lashram. That was a really interesting talk, and and it's it's a bit uh, hard to fathom the the amount of work that Ramanujan did in such a short life. Uh, it just seems way too much to try and synthesize in a single talk itself. Yeah, in fact, in I mean, he was third. Uh, he died at thirty-two, but during that time, what he did is really huge and immense, and a lot of things are done. Yeah, which shows the genius of, of the person, of course. Of course. Uh, a couple of uh, questions. So one one obvious thing is, as you said, uh, ever since he he died, unfortunately, a hundred years ago today, actually, yeah. um, uh, they 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 have uh, still been trying to understand some of the work that uh, he he did. Yeah. Uh, are there any more outstanding equations or theorems that he had had worked on, which still have been understood by the mathematics? Uh, yes, actually, uh, yeah, so there's some sort of about this hypergeometric series and uh, some equi like identities which people are still trying to figure out. So there's still some unsolved problem, like Ramanujan conjectures, as I mentioned, Ramanujan conjectures in automorphic forms. And some of them are still not proven. So he himself didn't, of course, make it as an explicit conjecture, but later on, from his work, this conjectures came out. So it's still. There are lot, I mean, still we are still to prove those conjectures. It just shows that uh, you know, if he had survived survive for longer, uh, the field of mathematics would be so much further ahead yeah, uh, than that it is right now, unfortunately. Uh, th that's another point which I really want to touch on, and I think this is pretty important for the community, uh, especially in India, is uh, the lack of formal education. Uh, even though he was a genius, seems to have helped him, held him back than, than what he would have been able to achieve otherwise. So do you think uh, this is something that we need to work further on in India in terms of aiding the mathematical community with formal education or has it improved a lot since, since Ramanujan? Well, actually, it has improved a bit, but it's still we need to work I mean, more. Because, uh, uh, How yeah. do you think we can, we can do that? Well, uh, so the thing is that is many students, particular like, uh, okay, so uh, like even if uh, so, suppose you may have interest in mathematics, but then because of many other issues, sometimes people doesn't uh, want to pursue. But then sometimes the way mathematics is taught at schools, etc. Even if you have interest, someone gets may lost interest because it's not in a very nice, interesting way in many places. 
So to have a sustaining interest, I mean, one is to have different activities, different programs to have sustaining interest in mathematics. And uh, I mean, so because for many people, mathematics comes as a dry subject. I mean, uh, many times people are sort of afraid from the world of mathematics. Either you show interest in maths or you don't like it. I mean, there's nothing like in between. So sort of one is to, I mean, present mathematics, um, the, at least the basics of mathematics in a uh, way, so I mean, so, so that uh, I mean, the beauty of mathematics one is to present in a more simpler, easier way to understand, so that if one is interested, they can go for it. Of course, if someone is not interested, you can't really force. But uh, some people who are sort of I mean, in between, who doesn't, I mean, who may have inclination but they doesn't know about it, can be taken on board. So, what do you suggest if there are any students or younger scientists who are interested in mathematics but do not know how to how to start a career? In? What would you suggest that they do? Uh, are there any organizations that they can uh, get yes, in touch actually, with? Yeah, actually, this National Board of Higher Mathematics, it has a lot of programs uh, to nurture this uh, mathematical talent. But then uh, I think right now, okay, right now, this, like if one is in colleges, then there's this program called Mathematics Training and Talent Search. In fact, I, I got benefited from this Mathematics Training and Talent Search program where uh, uh, during college time, uh, uh, you are exposed to the way the mathematics is used. I mean, the mathematics is done and sort of your trend, how the mathematicians think. So, and uh, that will help people to understand, I mean, sort of uh, after seeing this, then I mean, if someone has sort of interest and spark, then it will come up. So this play, programs like mathematics training and talent search at college level is good at high school level. Right now, I don't see many programs, but I think there's a need for doing, I mean, except some of the Olympiads, which are for exceptional students. But I think we need to have some sort of uh, mentoring and nursery programs at school levels too. Thank you for that. In fact, maybe this is something that NES can also help play a role in, in the future. We have a question on the YouTube channel, and I think you kind of answered it, but maybe you could reiterate it. Is why are these special numbers called taxi cab? Yeah, so yeah, that's what because uh, when Hardy came to see Ramanujan, he came in the taxi, and the number in taxi was 1729. So Hardy thought that it's a dull number because he saw then Ramanujan, you see Ramanujan has a sort of, he worked and he had these numbers in his mind all the time. So he, when he said it's about 17, 21, instantly he recognized that it's the smallest number which can be written as sum of two cubes in two different ways. So okay, then it's, it's quite interesting. That's how these numbers came to known as taxi cab numbers or Hardy, Hardy Ramanujan numbers. And as you said, we just know six of them. So there's plenty uh, more to be so found know, out. Yeah, so the first, there's the second taxi cab number. The third taxi cab number, we know this is again bigger than four taxi cab number. So basically, any taxi cab means you can write some of n cubes uh, in n different, uh, some of uh, two cubes in n different ways. So. Right. Thank you. Uh, another question uh, I have is uh, about what is now outstanding in the field of mathematics in terms of the big questions. Uh, mm -hmm. So if somebody was about to start a career in mathematics, uh, what field of mathematics or, you know, is there a single problem that they should dedicate their career to? I don't think there's anything like that. So of course, oh, when there is uh, the interest in mathematics, one has to pick up this basic, I mean, uh, like they have to learn this fundamental, basic fundamentals of mathematics. Like if they're in colleges, then they have, to, uh, they have to understand this concept of algebra, analysis, topology, and many number two, many things they have to learn and whatever they learn, they need to understand these basic fundamentals. After that, when they go to masters or even when do, doing PhD also, they will learn it. I mean, once you have the basic fundamentals, then you can sort of branch out and start learning many things. At the research level, of course, you, you got directed to certain uh, sort of smaller range, but initially one is to at least know this, like in pure mathematics, the notions of algebra, analysis, uh, number theory, graph theory, these things one is to sort of become familiar with because everything will be built up on them. That shows the value of the formal education in terms yeah, of yeah. building so, up to the future. Yeah. 
Uh, in fact, I'll tell you about this one problem in number two, which is very simple called Goldback conjecture. Every even number bigger than four can be written as sum of two odd primes. Like six is three plus three, eight is three plus five, 10 is five plus five, three plus seven, et cetera. So you can write every even number bigger than four in this way. Now this is open problem. Any high school student, even a class five, five six is one will understand this problem. And they will think that, okay, I can, but then right now we don't know how to prove it. So to prove it, actually you really need to know these parameters and build up, I mean, into more higher, I mean, of course, there may, right now, of course, we don't know the proof, but the closest we know is this work of Chen in uh, China, who is also known as Ramanujan of China, where he's, I mean, sort of had some close results. So, but then that used a lot of advanced mathematics. So one has to understand with basic mathematics and then go for yeah. it. Yeah, and it also shows that sometimes the simplest of the problems can be the most difficult to prove. Yeah, right? definitely. Yeah, that's true. Right. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, we've run off, out of time, so we'll have to uh, close this uh, session. But thank you so much for coming onto the INYAS platform and delivering the talk on the life and achievements of Srinivasa. It's okay. very encouraging to see uh, that even without proper education, you can make a mark in, in the field of science. But with formal education. Yeah, definitely, so yeah, of course. One can make a certain mark, but one re actually require formal training at some point of time to go forward. Yes. Okay, so thank you very thank much you. for this um, invitation, and I hope uh, this some of the people got benefited, and I look forward to the activities of India. India. I'm sure lots of people enjoyed the talk, and plus the talk will be on YouTube for the next few uh, months, so I'm sure people will keep looking at it. Okay, thank you. Have thank you. Night. Good job. Okay, so I'm closing the session. Yes. Thank you.